Hiya folks, welcome to another Irish Whiskey Review with me, Marty McCauley. Uh, I, I do realise I've abandoned you for a few weeks now. I haven't put one up for a, well, for a number of weeks, but I've, I've been busy and there's been a few other things going on that just, just meant I haven't had time. Uh, but I haven't forgot about you. So we're, we're pulling the stops out tonight, we're going to do something, well, a, a, a bit different. Okay, this isn't whiskey. Okay. This is, this is putching. And I've been wanting to do this for a, for a long while now. But I didn't get an original set. <laughs> Sold out in seconds, had it in the basket, ended up didn't get it. Anyway, there was a pro I had a problem with the processing and it all disappeared. But luckily a couple of weeks ago, up popped a new pack. So this is Cologne Putchin in miniature. And what we got was, and I like this, this is to be encouraged by lots of people. Limited edition things coming out where when you buy it you get two little miniatures. So what you can do is have a little tasty tasty Mmm, this is quite good though, whatever, not good, whatever, whatever you think. And another one you can keep, if you wish. They're wax sealed, so there's no leakage. And you can get your own wee decorative stave. We were very, very happy to get this. Now, they were very, very limited. And, and don't be under this illusion, guys. You know, I, I got accused the other day of, oh, everybody keeps stuff for you. No, they don't. I buy the vast bulk of what I describe and taste and test I purchased myself this was purchased Brendan and the guys did not send me these samples up I went down to an off license a few miles away from me took a fair wee bit of driving to go and get it and bought this myself now I have this set and if I like it I might drink the others I might not I might keep it I might put it on display it's a, it's a nice little size, look. So I was well happy, I was impressed. I thought this was smart and innovative. Because this is the Quiga Butchin. Please don't, don't give off about my Irish pronunciation. I don't speak Irish. Um, I've no great desire to learn to speak Irish. I might, I might get Linda Irvine over in the, the, the tourists, over in the Newton Arts Road to, to educate me a bit. But, uh, yeah. Uh, but it's another innovation from our very, very good friends down at Killowen. You know? And we do love, we do love Killowen. Everybody loves Killowen. Because they're this plucky little, passionate little place. We were down a few weeks ago, down last week, last week and uh, brought it up on the Irish Whiskey Review on the Saturday night, did a quick interview, did a little live stream with Brendan, and got to find out some new stuff, and we're down there. And I'm not very big, okay? We are vertically challenged, as sometimes people have said, and so got the, you got a skilled comparison between myself and the stills. Even Justin got a look at that too. So, yeah, we're down. Uh, I'm wearing a t-shirt tonight because it's, it's sort of clammy, or as we would say in this part of the world, close. Sort of clammy and sticky, so I, I dispensed of the jumper. Now, what we have here is smoked potching. It's not whiskey. It's it's sometimes viewed as inferior little brother, which is totally and utterly unfair. Potching has... Got lots going for it, but it suffers from this reputation of being made in milk churns, and and other various receptacles, homemade, fired out at sixty plus percent ABV by guys who, oh, they're the real secret masters, and they make it in some barn somewhere up up a mountain. These guys are not professionals. And I don't mean to be cheeky and rude. But lots of them don't really know what they're doing. And it's a bit like taking drugs. Okay? If you go to a pharmacist 
and purchase a pee and killer, okay? That has to go through lots and lots of trials. Even the labeling of it is so detailed and so precise because you're putting it in your body. But you rely on, when you go to a master distiller, someone who's earned their trade, who, who knows what they're doing, is using professional equipment, doing it to a standard, it's something similar. If you go to someone who's brewing their own whiskey and you're ingesting that into your body, you have no idea of what you're drinking. Okay, it's just the long and the short of it. There are lots and lots of illicit distillers who are very good. Let's be honest, they, they, they've learned their trade over a vast amount of time. But they only need to make one mistake. And it can, it can be very, very detrimental to your health. So, we all know, certainly in Ireland, if you really wanted to, you can find out and buy some some uh, illegal hooch. Don't I advise against it, guys? It's it's not it's not to be advised, and that's what Pochin suffers from a bit. When it's craftily made and made to a really good standard with professional equipment, it does have lots and lots going for it. It has really got. I wouldn't necessarily say complexities because that's possibly overselling it a little bit. It has lots of flavour without it necessarily being as complex as whiskey. But there are now barrel aging whiskies or barrel aging pot chains, I should say. And under the technical file, you're allowed to do this for 10 weeks. This would have been done as a, a, years ago. People would have aged it in casks for a lot longer than 10 weeks. They could have done it for, for months. And then it would have, could have possibly went over into much more into a whiskey connotation. But you do have lots of flavour without necessarily being in taste. Now what Brendan and the guys have done down there is they've made five whiskies. And it's named after fifths, after the provinces, the old provinces of Ireland. Because everyone knows there's only four, Ulster, Leinster, Munster and Connacht. But back in the day you'd have had, County Meath was seen as being a province as well. Because of the, the, the Hill of Tara, where the High Kings of Ireland were crowned, and it was its own province. Now if what he did was, these are, and you have to bear with me because there's lots to talk about about this set. Okay, it is 24 hour flame fed, double distilled, and worm tub condensed. And the spirit's laid down for 10 weeks in different casks, little firkin casks. So essentially, you're getting the same spirit, and the difference is always going to be the cask. They're basically laid exactly the same for the same length of time in different beer casks and brewery casks essentially from each of the provinces and that's the idea now i have to read this because it's very hard to remember the the, the mash bill the mash bill is 50 percent peated barley 21.6 unmalted barley 14.2 oats malted and peat smoked on site in the tiniest little smokehouse you've ever seen in your life 7.1% wheat and 7.1% rye. Okay, so I have to read that out because my spells like that, I'm not going to remember. Now, I'm going to do sort of brief tastings with these. Now, there is, it's peated barley and peat smoked oats. Now, they're named after various sort of landmarks. Uh... Lutty and Connacht, which is a, a very nice area over in uh, Galway, isn't it? It's Galway, I think. Ah, over in Galway, yes. Just had to check again. All this information here. Um, you have Cali and Meath, which is a set of hills and mountains. You have Mish and Monster which is the highest mountain over there. Duff in Leinster, which is in the Wicklow Mountains. And then you have Sleeve Donard, which is obviously 
for for me obviously i say obviously it's not obvious for anyone that's not there obviously is the highest point in northern ireland in county down in the Mourne mountains now as i say the, the these are essentially the same spirit but they're laid down differently they're, they're laid down in these firkins these little casks for 10 weeks and then brought out so we're going to try three of them i'll just pick three at random we'll pick the duff from leinster and the the the, the breweries where the breweries are this is the old brother brewery okay and that is from that province this is the West Kerry Brewery and that's from Munster obviously pour it in and as you can tell I've tasted some of these and then I'm going to do God's Own Country Ulster and this is the Whitewater Brewery not to show favouritism, but this is the, the the Ulster one's the best. I'm only, jo I'm only joking, but uh, you do finest province in all of Ireland. So, so really, the only difference between these is the cask, and how much of an influence can it make in ten weeks? So, what what does it do? That's coming through. This is the the Duff one. This is from Leinster. It's coming through as quite, it's quite fresh vegetal, not not fruity. It's coming through as vegetal. The the medicinal aspect of this is coming through from the peat, but it's a very very sweet peat, so. It, it smells on the nose medicinal without and vegetal rather than sweet and fruity which is it's different than what a lot of people's palates would take these days so this is the mish in the West Kerry brewery and what you're getting there it is vegetal but not in the same it's thicker and and kind of kind of like molasses kind of kind of there's a demerara dark sugary note to it possibly treacle um that's coming through and and the peat's a totally different style of, a totally different influence on it the peat's actually coming through in a in, a, in almost a smoked fish note so you're getting that smoky note, but it's coming through as a, 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 a kind of meaty, fishy note to it, smoked meat. So where this is slightly more medicinal, this is slightly more umami, it's slightly more fishy, if you like. And then the Ulster one, coming through, again quite light. The peat aspects of it are, are slightly further down. The, the, this one, the Ulster one's not really bouncing around as much as these two. The, probably, I like I like the Leinster one best out of these three. Because once you once you get longer in on the nosing, it actually does start to sweeten a little bit once it's it's in the glass for a bit. Yeah, it starts to sweeten up. Whereas that doesn't necessarily change the whole way through. The the, the monster one mesh kind of stays the same the whole way through in the nosing. There's no real difference in moving. And yeah, that that's quite sweet. If I'm honest, 
it's quite light, it probably has the least complex nose out of these three. And I, 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 I'm not going to taste all five of these now. That's very nice. Yeah, 55%. It's really quite strong. That's got a lovely, very easy drinking. A very, a very delicate finish on it, actually. It's quite thick to start with and really lightens and moves across. And actually plays a little, a little dance along your tongue. Yeah. That's, that's, that's really good. Again, Putchin's not overly complex, but it does have lots of flavour. Yeah. This <clears throat> is quite well driven, and the oats is playing quite a nice tune in this. You're getting that lovely creaminess from the oats, and that smoked oats is given given flavours to it that 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 really are totally different than you would get with a whiskey. But that's that's a nice thing. That, that Pochin's not whiskey. It's not trying to be whiskey. It's it's a, it's its own thing. And yeah. Now we'll go again for the mish. Mm-hmm. Mm. A lot more heat. Actually when when first on its arrival, this is this has got sugary sweetness. Which does stay with you. It stays with you. It sits there at the front and stays with you. But the, the the development is, is reminiscent of this, but different in a sufficient enough way that you know you're tasting something different. But you you would think these two are very very similar. You, uh, the cask hasn't changed it that much, but there's a difference. That that's actually a lot sweeter on the tongue than it is on the nose, which is which again it's nice it's giving you different aspects it's giving you different workabilities with it mm -hmm. mm. well that one with the ulster I think the rye comes in a bit more in the Ulster than it does in the other ones, which gives it a spicy note uh, and gives you that that spiciness that it plays. It comes across slightly differently. It's got it's spiky without being balanced. Uh, now finish this Ulster. Yeah. Yeah, it, it, there's an awful lot going on without it necessarily being complex. And what I mean by that, because people will probably jump on this and say, oh no, uh, you said it wasn't complex. What I mean by complexity is something starts and moves across and finishes differently and, and it's got depth of flavour and balances and, and that kind of thing. Pudging tends not to be like that. It tends, it has complex things. So whenever I'm talking about it, I'm talking about the mash bills and so on and so forth. The complexity of it's a different aspect. The complexity of it I'm talking about is where it starts and moves across and has all these different subtle variations. Pochin doesn't necessarily have that. But what you're getting here is differences and a level of complexity in and of the casks. And the things that are at work here are different than whiskey. Now that's been in the glass a minute. 
and is sweetening up a little. That's that's playing about. I said it was sweet on the on the arrival in the mouth, but in the nose, it's not. You wouldn't detect the sweetness necessarily on the nose. And that's why this is such a an interesting thing to do. Have these three lined up and see what they are. The other two, I I, I could go and get more glasses, but you, you end up just getting totally and utterly lost. But these are three different animals. That's slightly smoky, smokier again, and they're in the glass. They're moving about. I was really pleased to get my hands on this. They're really, really scarce, really rare. But hopefully, hopefully there will be more issues of this kind of thing. Cologne being small, Brendan, as he said, it's easier to turn a dinghy than the Titanic. So they're able to do these. They can able have these little experiments. And these will always be collectible and nice. Will I open these? Hmm. I've tried these. We'll maybe wait and see what else comes out of Cologne. And it is a wonderful place. Do pay them attention because I, I, Brendan was genuinely, I think, touched when I said to him he is an influencer big time in Irish whiskey because he is. Lots of the big guys will be watching to see what he's doing. And as Pochin becomes much more recognisable as an Irish product, as an Irish, indigenous Irish product, the big guys at some point are going to jump on it. And one of these, they might turn around and go, yeah, that's the kind of thing we want to do. And it will be led by the, be led by the likes of, of Cologne and some of the other guys that are making the Pochin. These are very rare to get. You'll probably have to pick them up at an auction site, but they're not going skyrocket crazy for for prices. You can pick them up at the auction and uh, give them a whirl, but do try poaching. It's not nothing like the gut rot that your granddad or your dad or your uncle Jimmy used to bring in and all that kind of stuff. It's not like that anymore. These are professionally made, professionally bottled, and overseen and finished and these have much much more taste to them much more flavor and are much much safer okay so don't be buying stuff off somebody out the back of a van for 10 pound a 10 glass bottle don't be doing it that's my advice okay so come watch us on a saturday night justin and myself as we explore the world of whiskey and hopefully take you all on a journey so i shall bid you adieu and uh, we'll catch up you with you again soon take care folks bye bye